but I know that the reason was fear. Um, and I was going to give a message about the U.S. moral leadership failing and we've cut refugee resettlement by 75% and all this stuff about how we're, we're not doing our part, but I want to instead take my moment and send a message to the refugees that may be listening to say, we love you, we are glad you are here, and welcome home. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Rita Danks, uh, Friends of Immigrants Lake County, uh, who volunteers at the uh, southern border. Gracias por venir. Muy bienvenidos. I'm Rita, and I work at the border with the Samaritans of Green Valley. I've been doing it for eight years now. Um, I speak to you from all those that have no voice to speak, and there are literally thousands in Nogales, Mexico, where I work. People are coming from El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, and last time I was there a couple weeks ago, we had Cubans. The area of Mexico that has the most people fleeing is Guerrero, that particular state in central Mexico. These people are fleeing extortion, gangs, mafias, cartels. We also see a big increase in indigenous people that are coming that neither speak English nor Spanish. Um, big increase with the babies and the toddlers and entire family units that are there because of their life. When I was first started my work there, it was mostly young men. Now, it's mostly families. The shelters right now, we've got between 12 and 1,500 people waiting. They don't all fit. They were in the shelters before this thing from Trump came. They all had numbers. Now the wait is approximately six months to get her for the asylum cases. And because they can't fit in the shelters anymore, they're on the street in homemade plastic sheeting that's about three feet tall. They have to climb into it. Um, I can urge everybody to put pressure on faith groups, churches, and elected officials because, as was mentioned before, it is an extreme humanitarian crisis going on. And there are more and more people dying, too. The aim of Samaritans who I work for is to prevent the death and dying in the desert. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. And now uh, we're going to hear from Mary Ellen Struz, who is uh, housing um, an asylum seeker uh, in her home. My sister and I have been greatly blessed by having the opportunity to um, provide a refuge or a place for Roger um, to stay. He had fled in a great, uh, under great danger from Honduras. His story, I'll try to keep it short because of the rain and everything. Um, but in Honduras, he's a 25 year old man. Um, he had worked for a furniture company and on his way home from work, he was attacked by gangs trying to extort the, to get the address, the telephone number of the owner of the company. Roger did not know that. They had no access to it whatsoever. He was badly beaten. He reported the incident to the police. A short time later, um, he was on his way home and attacked severely. He believes very strongly that the police are involved with this. He was le left for dead on the side of the road. He had, they had amputated his foot. A bypasser noticed he was still breathing and made arrangements to get him to a hospital. After 52 days in unconscious condition, he did go home. Um, he was fitted with a very primitive kind of prosthetic. Within a few months, uh, the police raided his home. He ran out the back door and hid in a neighbor's uh, house. At that point in time, he had to leave and flee immediately. His family had no idea where he was going, where he had gone. It was just Roger was gone. He walked across Guatemala and Mexico. He swam the Rio Grande River and turned himself in 
to ICE. He was then put on an airplane and sent to Youngstown, one of the most notorious private prisons. That was from November to May. The um, executive director of OLA, along with a pro bono lawyer, uh, got him out and he is staying with my sister and me. He has um, a court date in January. He is the loveliest, sweetest person you can ever imagine. He is so grateful to be out. The first two days, he wouldn't even step outside the house. He was afraid to step outside the house. The end of May, his wife gave birth to their first child, a son. Thank heavens for technology, because with WhatsApp, he can hear the baby cry. He can see the baby. We met his wife over the computer. His mother throws kisses every time she sees us. I mean, can you imagine not knowing that your son is a dead or alive? It's really just been a wonderful thing for him that he did get released. But we're still very worried about what could happen in January, uh, especially under all of these increased mean-spirited things that are being undertaken by this administration. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Now I'm going to uh, turn it over to Don, who will, um, uh, I, he was going to tell us our uh, route okay. that we were going to take for the march, uh, but uh, he's going to uh, tell you uh, what we're going to do next. Hi, all. Thank you for coming out today to uh, the federal building here in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, our message to the government, as all these folks have said, is to abide by international conventions that the U.S. is a signatory on to give refugees uh, a place in our country and treat them humanely, uh, just as we wish that if we go to another country that we would be treated humanely. In case there was a flood or a fire or crime was rampant and we had to flee like some of these people are fleeing to the north and also they're fleeing across the world. There is 71 million fleeing now across the world. Many, many times due to war, uh, due, due to uh, food shortages, due to political unrest and, and that. And a lot of those things are due to Western policies such as the wars, we, our country, our government seems to promote wars around the globe, as you, as you are aware. And also, even our trade policies have affected people to leave their homes, such as NAFTA, displaced 1.3 million farmers many years ago, and it subsidized the huge farms, but the small farmer was out of business. So where are they to go to feed their family? Thank you, USA. Let's be more humane in all of these policies and stop jailing children, separating families, banning Muslims. This is illegal by our standards of law in this country and by international standards as well. Uh, we were going to march today also to give the message to the federal courthouse on, on West 9th Street off of Superior, which is where Immigration Court is. And that's where these uh, refugees and other immigrants are put in uh, a cell, of course, and they're on video camera before a judge in Cleveland. And they're located in private prisons around the state and the country. And this is, this is so inhumane. We must disallow this to continue, and we will stand up against this policy, Mr. Trump and administration. Thank you very much. We will we will reconvene again via Facebook. We had talked about meeting next Thursday. If people would like to do that, we can. Uh, we're going to cancel the march for today due to the rain. And uh, our last speaker was Abbas Hamida. He was going to speak over there on Palestinian refugees because uh, he's still at work, was going to come late. Uh, in 1948, there was many thousands of Palestinian refugees uh, worldwide that, that were that were thrown out of uh, Palestine, which was the uh, making of Israel at that time in 1948. 
and I do have a, a few short notes. Yep, never mind. Anyway, they have, the Palestinian refugees have expanded to over a million in, uh, worldwide, and they still cannot return to their homes since 1948. Thank you so much, and let's do one last chant if it's okay. Say it strong, say it clear. Say it strong, say it clear. Refugees are welcome here. Say it strong, say it clear. Refugees are welcome here. Say it strong, say it clear. Refugees are welcome here. Say it strong, say it clear. Refugees are welcome here. Say it strong, say it clear. Refugees are welcome here. Say it strong, say it clear. Refugees are welcome here. Say it strong, say it clear. Refugees are welcome here. We are human, we are people. No one is illegal. We are human, we are people. No one is illegal. We are human, we are people. No one is illegal. Thank you so much for coming out. We know the refugees have a terrible journey over to the United States and to wherever else they go. As we know, many other countries are taking the refugees in, and the U.S. is just taking a very small amount at this time. Thank you for coming out on this rainy day. Peace to you all.